week, the Resident Evil film franchise was rebooted with Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. So today I'm gonna stop and rank all seven Resident Evil films from the worst to the best. My name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all seven Resident Evil films. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. As a point of reference, I haven't really played the Resident Evil games besides, you know, dabbling a little bit here and there, but I have seen all of the Resident Evil films multiple times, going all the way back to the opening weekend when the first movie came out. I was there front and center, looking forward to watching a good zombie B movie. And that's really what I go into these movies looking for, some fun zombie, carnage. I'm not going in looking for a faithful adaptation of the video games because I wouldn't know what that was anyway because I haven't really played the videos. Just a point of reference as I go into this and let's get started. Coming in in last place, Resident Evil Retribution. To me, this was the bottom of the barrel for the franchise. It was all style, no substance, just them looking for excuses to have a bunch of big set pieces, bring back some dead characters, and just continue the franchise without having anything interesting or new to add to the mythology. Right off the bat, the movie kicks off by killing off almost all of the surviving characters from the previous movie. Not a great plan. Which to me is one of the worst sins a movie can commit because it just undoes any victory or any point to the previous story. From there, it takes us off to a totally different place where we're in this lab where they're working their way through levels that represent different things we've seen in different movies. And all of it just feels so hollow, like they're just milking the franchise for more money and looking for an excuse to continue things without having to come to any sort of conclusion, without having to add any new layers or depth to anything that's been taking place. And so this is the equivalent of just watching action sequences devoid of context on YouTube, except as it turns out, this is a movie. And so for me, this one just rings totally hollow and is just visual noise. Number six, Resident Evil Extinction. This movie is one part Resident Evil, one part Day of the Dead, and one part Mad Max, but zero parts actually compelling story. And I think that's the problem here, is that this movie felt like a series of chronological events in a new location, but it doesn't establish a clear narrative. There's not an obvious, objective that our characters are working towards or clear character arcs for anyone. It's just more time in this zombie apocalypse, this time out in the desert. And their way of kind of like expanding things and bringing something new to the table is like, just give Alice new powers. So suddenly she's kind of magical and can do a bunch of stuff, but it just feels like there's no clear direction. There's no target that we're aiming for. We're just moving forward in chronological order and adding new ingredients without a clear point to any of it. Also, it kills off the one character with some personality in the middle of the film, and it's just as silly as Apocalypse, except it takes itself a lot more serious. So when all the ridiculous stuff happens, you cringe at it more than having fun with it because the movie doesn't seem to realize it's being silly. In which case, when movies are overly serious while they're silly, it's just tough for me to enjoy them. Next up, Resident Evil, the final chapter. Now, I was initially tempted to put this movie one or two spots higher on this list for the simple fact that it's a movie that has a beginning, middle, and an end. It gives definitive answers as to what has transpired and what all of this has been about, and it comes to a final conclusion. As I kind of referenced with the previous two movies on this list, as this franchise went along, it started to feel a little bit like we were running on a treadmill where you had these movies that a bunch of stuff happens, it's a bus bunch of twists and turns, but you never feel like you actually arrive anywhere. You never feel like you got anywhere. You just went through more levels of a video game only to reveal there's more levels to that video game. Therefore, this movie was satisfying simply because you actually arrived at the end of it and the end of this franchise with something conclusive and definitive. 
But the execution of that story to get us to the end is just so unbelievably shoddy. Right off the bat, the movie's predecessor ended with this big cliffhanger about the battle of Washington, D.C. at the Capitol, the White House and all that stuff. This movie skips over that. Like this battle that obviously we want to see a battle in that context. It just skips over it. And then we take off on this new adventure and it has some of the most egregious, shaky cam, quick cut, close up action I have ever seen. <laughs> And there's simply no excuse for it because the director directed like five other movies in this franchise where he didn't use this crappy directorial style and he just decided to end it, add it into this film where you can't make out anything that's taking place. So I do appreciate that this movie actually gives answers and comes to a conclusion. But why on earth did they make the choices that they made all along the way to get there? In fourth place, Resident Evil Afterlife. Of that middle segment of Resident Evil sequels that felt like we were just on the treadmill, this was easily my favorite of the bunch with the best set of characters and the best situations for them to be stuck in. Certainly, the movie still kind of plays out like we're just playing through a series of levels. The first 15 minutes is just a follow-up to what happened in the previous movie, and then that gets resolved, and then we move on to the next stage, where it's a little bit like Dawn of the Dead, except in this building. And I like Dawn of the Dead, so I thought it worked pretty nicely. And then you get to the last 20 minutes, and then it's like we're in a totally new context that feels like we're at a different level of the video game. But I just thought this one with the schlock value, the situations we're in, was a bit more enjoyable. In fact, it might have been a spot higher up on this list, except I just hate the way this movie ends, where you go through all this struggle, all of this conflict to get to this ship, and then the helicopters show up that end up killing everybody, and it undermines all of the satisfaction of victory, of accomplishment, and kind of just cheats like, oh, just kidding, you were tricked, you're all gonna die. I, I just don't like endings like that. They always feel hollow and like the director and writer are cheating. And so it kind of ended this movie on a sour note. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to join me down below in the comment section, share your ranking of all seven Resident Evil films. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list and I would love to see yours. And remember to let me know are you a fan of the video games or are you someone like me that just watches these as zombie movies? I'd love to hear your take on it. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, I've done more like it. Right up here, I got a video where I ranked the top 20 highest grossing video game movies of all time. And I have another one where I gave my top 10 favorite video games of all time. You can check those out right up here when this video is over. In third place, Resident Evil, welcome to Raccoon City. Now I went into this movie so hoping that it was going to be my favorite of the Resident Evil films because based off the trailer, it seemed like it got the tone and the atmosphere much better than the previous Resident Evil films. And then I went to go see the film and that is true. This one plays like a horror movie. And so it just kind of has this lingering sense of of horror and dread in the air. It's not played like a slick, glossy action movie that's ripping off the Matrix like a whole bunch of the other movies in this franchise. It is a horror movie with zombies based off a horror video game franchise. And so it just nailed the tone and the atmosphere. And then as someone that's just mildly dabbled in the video games, I could tell that this was a movie just jam-packed with references to the video games. I, I understood that reference. Callbacks, direct adaptations of moments, characters, all that fun stuff. So if you are someone that loves the video games, you probably picked up on a bunch of stuff that I didn't pick up on, and a bunch of things made more sense to you than they made to me. But with all that said, I simply don't think that the storytelling, character development were as strong as the atmosphere that was created. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. Part of that is that there's just a bunch of characters that just seem to be thrown into the movie because they're in the video games, but they're not developed. Everybody has like one character, personality trait, and one distinctive quality or 
thing about their backstory that we know or their objective, their thing that they're moving towards. So they only have two dimensions to them. No one is fleshed out. No one is compelling. Very simplistic characters that I imagine if you know the video games, it's a much more elaborate backstory or interesting characters. They just weren't for me as kind of the new guy to all of this. The other big gigantic problem here is that it breaks up our characters into a bunch of different groups, so it's intercutting between all of them. We're putting like the time on the screen to let you know we're approaching a point in time where the city's gonna be blown to pieces. And for whatever reason, the way it was cut together and edited with all the different people, it just cut all the tension for me. It never felt like there was this lingering danger, like we were approaching something horrible happening because it kept cutting away before anything could happen. And so it just lost all the tension that should have been building, especially as a movie that gave us a distinct ticking clock. We knew at a specific time the city would be blown to pieces. We need to get out of there before that happens. But the story never made that feel urgent. We never felt like we were in danger of these characters dying if they didn't get somewhere at a point in time. And so it just lacked the tension that should have been prominently on display in the film. And the other big problem here is that there was just an enormous lack of logic in the storytelling. The most obvious example to me was at one point in time, a group of people go to a mansion, they split up into two groups, and on one side of the mansion, they're having a gunfight, and the people on the other side don't hear it. And on this side of the mansion, a helicopter crashes into the mansion, and on the other side, they don't even notice it. This is the sort of thing that just feels like defies any sorts of reasonable logic. Likewise, our Robbie Amell character, his sister tells him like, hey, everyone in the city's getting sick from what's in the water. And he's like, you're a crazy conspiracy theorist. Even though in the last 30, you know, five minutes of the movie, they've showed us someone bleeding from their eyes. They showed us his neighbors are losing all of their hair. And he's like, what? Nobody's sick. You're crazy. And there's just so many moments that defy any sort of logic. And so while I love the atmosphere, the cast was a lot of fun. There's a good bit of zombie carnage. The storytelling itself simply didn't live up to all the good characteristics of the film. Our runner up, Resident Evil Apocalypse. This to me is a guilty pleasure film, or as I call them, Taco Bell movies. They're cinematic fast food. They're easy to digest. They're easy to have fun with, but you know, they're not actually great cinema. Going into this film immediately, there is a sharp turn towards the goofy where things are more over the top. A lot of the characters play out more like caricatures and there's a much greater emphasis on just ridiculous action sequences, cool monsters showing up, lots of machine guns. And it, this is my type of schlocky, Resident Evil zombie action movie. It's not trying to be great cinema, but I think it does deliver entertainment value, and I have a lot of fun with this movie. This is what I wish, like the bottom five movies on the, the list, or the bottom four movies on this list, were more like this film, that understood that they were goofy, understood that they were cheesy, but you do have a beginning, middle, and end, a clear objective of what our characters are trying to do. And it's not like an amazing story, but there actually is a story and an objective that you get to at the end before we have our big twist turn reveals and all of that. But in first place, Resident Evil. This movie feels very different from the rest of the franchise in that it's a closed corridor story all set in this underground lab. And it's mostly free from the cartoonish excesses of the rest of the franchise, while of course the remake has a totally different tone in and of itself. And the movie to me kind of plays like a B-movie version of Aliens. It takes 40 minutes before the zombies even appear. It's kind of this slow burn of building tension before suddenly we find ourselves in this hectic escape to try and survive. Of course, it doesn't have the great characters, themes, and storytelling of Aliens, but as a B-movie schlocky version of it, I think it's a good enough version in its own right and does a decent enough job of building intrigue and suspense prior to when it turns into full-blown action mode. There's a couple of sequences in here that are actually a little bit memorable, in particular the laser hallway sequence where the guys get shredded by lasers. So a sequence you tend to remember once you've seen it one time. So while I don't think this is like a great zombie movie, I do think it's an enjoyable one. It's easy to consume, easy to have 
some fun with it when you need some light entertainment on in the background and you want something unassuming that doesn't demand too much of you. And for me, of all of the Resident Evil films, this is the most well-balanced of the bunch. I wish it had more of the tone of Welcome to Raccoon City, and I think that could have made it even better, not have so much kind of the cheese of the early zeros, but it tells a story with a beginning, a middle, and end, has some memorable moments, and does actually build some tension before you get plenty of action in the second half of the film. So it comes in at number one. If you enjoyed this video and want more like it, you can check out my video with the top 20 highest grossing video game movies ranked right there. You can see my 10 favorite video games right down there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.